Good morning and welcome to another one of my videos. Today I am at Shoreham and I've come to the Church of the Good Shepherd and I've got Rob has just come down to join me. Tactics today. Um, two continental rods, Enigma hammers, 15 foot long, two multipliers. I messed up with the weight weight <laughs> And a lot of you took the mickey out of my 150 ounce weight. So <laughs> to get it right today, I have 150 grams gripper weight on this one. I've got a drop down rig, single hook, size four to a um, sardine, which I've just cut into and whipped onto it. This one, I'm fishing 140 gram. And again, it's a drop down rig, beads. I've got a salted lug and a frozen black. I have got fresh bait, but I'm just gonna see if this um, works just out of curiosity. So I'm gonna bosh the big rod out first while the tide's coming in. So I've got a bit of distance, I'm just gonna leave it. And then this one I'm hoping to catch place on is the plan. So let's crack these rods out. Now, before I chuck these rods out, um, I, like I'm sure a lot of you out there, have been quite discombobulated by the aggravation that's going on in uh, Ukraine. And it's very close um, for me because my son lives in Poland, which obviously is right next door to Ukraine. And generally, I'm never political about anything, about COVID or anything, and don't really want to be political. But I do feel for all the poor people out there and I'm kind of constantly anxious about it um, as are people at work, um, which is ever more reason for doing what I do uh, to try and smooth all the stuff that I have jumbled around in my life. So enough of that, but I'm sure like a lot of you out there, we're all behind Ukraine and Putin, the message I have for you is focus on fishing forever. And the clever ones out there will figure out what that means. Enough of that, let's do fishing stuff. So I'm going to chuck the big bait out first and then wait for the tide to drop back in on it. I'm probably, well I'll measure out from here to up there how far I need to cast to get out onto the mud to target the place, but let's chuck these out. Don't need to hurl it out too far because the tide is coming in. That is out there. And then this one. Okay. Job done. So today, um, kind of spur of the moment, I was going to go ray fishing yesterday down at Dimchurch, but the weather was rubbish and I didn't fancy a two hour journey there and a two hour journey back to stand in the rain and watch my rods bang around. I was gonna fish on the low tide so there was nothing to kind of protect us from the uh, wind. 
So I called a rain check, so I'm going to do that maybe next weekend. Um, and then the weekend before, because a few of you asked me where was I, the weather was rubbish and I was doing stuff with my wife and my new dog, um, who has charmed my life, although my wife is very insistent that the dog loves me more than it loves her. And I can continually tell the dog it must share the love because we don't want any jealousy between me and my wife. In that, um, I was going to say hairy triangle, but they're probably not, not the words I really want to be using. Um, I've got Rob behind me. He's trying out his new reel. Uh, it is pretty windy today, as ever, with the way of my fishing, but the wind is coming from that direction. Tide is coming in. A friend of ours was fishing a competition yesterday down that way and had five place. So uh, you never know. Um, I've got fresh bait now, which Rob has kindly got for me. All we can do is uh, try. Swimmers up there, they're brave, aren't they, going in. It is freezing today, northeasterly. But when I, um, I got down here, there was a lady on the low tide mark wandering along, picking up fishing weights. Anyway, she wandered back towards me and uh, laid into me in a, in a really offensive way, I have to say. Shouldn't be on the beach. Um, we're a, what were the words she used? She said, uh, I should be um, feeling shame for destroying the environment with all my other fishing colleagues out there. Now, she was really assertive and I kind of nearly reacted to it and told her to go and whatever, but then I thought, no. Um, I thanked her for her input. I said I didn't want a lecture. I then said, there's a Coke can over there. Does that mean that people, when they come down here and have picnics, they shouldn't? And then she had the cheek to tell me, I don't want a lecture. Anyway, I then told her to mind her own business and leave me alone and stop harassing me and go and do other stuff. And I'd take the weights and I'd recycle the line and the hooks and she wouldn't give them to me. She was going to chuck them in the dustbin, which then goes into landfill, which then the birds get mixed up in. Stupid woman. So my day didn't really start too well. And there was also a diversion getting down here. I don't know why. The wind's about 15 miles an hour. Tide turned about half an hour ago. So plan is once it gets a bit further up, sort of by the groin, we may be in with a chance of a fish as it gets a little bit deeper. But I think I'm going to go and have a coffee. Now, Rob has bought himself a new toy. So, what did you get, reel-wise? Reel, it's the um, Penn Rival 7000 Long Cast Blue, because it's blue. Hey, and how's it working? With two, two spare spools. Um, haven't actually gone for full power yet, but I reckon with a light braid and nothing on the end other than the weight, I'm probably getting 150 yards. Bloody but, hell. I mean, for an old bloke. That's not bad. Now let, let yeah, let's put Rob under pressure. <laughs> let's just see how far out this goes. Well, it was going out there for a wee while. I couldn't even see the splash, so that's gone out a fair old distance. I would suggest. If there was an award for being a pillock today, I've won it, hands down. Up by my bivvy, the shingle drops probably about three foot, like vertically, and it's sloped either side. And I was walking back to try and get the <laughs> camera shot that I wanted, forgetting that there was a drop and went backwards like a pillock. Uh, and then was laying at this sort of angle with him laughing at me. But I deserved it. So let us hope the rest of today's session is a bit smoother, that I don't get any more lectures from miserable... I was going to be, but I'm not. 
but you know what I mean, you know what I'm thinking. Let us put that to one side and not let it upset me. I was fishing a um, few weeks ago down at uh, Ramsgate and um, there was a huddle of people sort of just away from me in a sort of semicircle with an older lady and a, they were carrying like a big purple screw top jar and then I realised as I saw the contents go over the side that they were scattering someone's ashes which was really touching but what kind of made me think of it is that I was down here I suppose about a month ago with Martin and the tide was right out and I saw him go down the beach at 20 past seven in the morning with a can of Guinness and I'm thinking what is he doing that's a bit early to be drinking Guinness anyway he walks down the beach like this walks out a bit and then pours it into the water <laughs> what is he doing maybe he's praying to the fish gods but it transpired and it really touched me is that his dad his ashes were scattered um, by the lifeboat people near that bit that we were fishing on and whenever he comes down a couple of times a year he always remembers his dad and that's where I'd like to go is out there and people to do that and remember me because I remember my uncle with great fondness he was a curmudgeonly man <laughs> he was a difficult man to get on with, um, very opinionated, but like all of us, lots of flaws, but I really, really miss him, and he's the chap who got me on the fishing journey, and I always, kind of every week, remember him, and he makes me chuckle. I think of him sitting there with his pipe, hunched over his fishing rod, on the rivers we used to go to, catching little brown trout and eels and um, sitting on the beach drinking whiskey <laughs> with a big cigar, bless him. Uh, so I want to be remembered one day like that by people I've fished with. There's a very tame crow here, I wonder how close he'll come. How about that? That's close, isn't it? Oh yes. It's rather good, isn't it? My good turn for today. Right, I've had a few little taps on here. So I've just reeled in. And there is... <laughs> Whoa! One of those fish on the end. We shouldn't really be proud of, but it's a fish. And I've caught a fish. Well, hey. <laughs> Albeit, a one of them. A little rockling. <laughs> <laughs> right little rockling let's get you back in well rockling you have saved the terry wogan in you go so rob and i have just been reeling in changing baits reeling in there's some big snag out in front of us he's caught on it lost a load of gear i've caught on it twice and just bent my hooks and nothing
Fishing is contrary. Okay, I think a ragworm. Let's try that. So, I put a, as you can see on here, a ragworm-lugworm combo. Um, and let's see if that makes any difference, but it's not looking good that the baits are not even being stripped by crabs. And we're getting close to the top of the tide, but there we go. Let's wash this out. So, last cast, and Rob, that's not bad, fellow, has caught this little chap. Literally, last cast. So, a fish apiece. Well done. Star points. Do I think a place beats a rockling? I think so. But I'm going to edit you out. Thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, a fish apiece. Um, I think if we continue fishing, we're not going to get any more, I have to say. We spent six or so hours. So I'm pleased for Rob, um, kind of balances the books. But I think a place beats a rockling. And I'm going to go home. To all of you out there, look after yourselves in this crazy mad world. And then next weekend, I'm aiming to go to sort of Eastbourne, Pevensey direction, although the wind's still pretty rubbish, I have to say. And it's now true easterly, it's coming from right behind me. And I think that's kind of what's gooned today. But there we go. We're lucky to be down here, I suppose. That's uh, one way of looking at it. Both of us are not infirm. We can go fishing. We're fortunate we live near the coast. and. Um, on that note, I will leave it there. So uh, I'll see you in a week's time. Cheers.